So we're habitual beings, and we tend to do things the way we've always done them, and we're going to talk about specifications in that context today. A lot of the organizations that we work with work off of uh, a specification sheet, um, a template um, into which the uh, uh, fill-in-the-blanks exercise is executed to create a spec sheet to communicate the design intent to engineering. Uh, the problem with a boilerplate uh, templated spec sheet is that it really doesn't distinguish the value um, uh, that differentiates one spec from the other. Which of these spec specifications are important and which of them are less important, which of them are in fact arbitrary. So a way of dealing with that is to divide your specifications into three categories, your musts, your shoulds, and your coulds. Musts are those requirements that without which you don't have a product, you don't have a position, a competitive position in the marketplace. The shoulds are those specifications uh, upon which your competitive advantage is built, things you're trying to accomplish in your value proposition. And then the third, the coulds are things that would enhance the value of your product, but really aren't worth focusing on, aren't worth investing efforts uh, uh, to achieve. These three categories still could be communicated as point specifications, but we can increase uh, the uh, value being communicated, the information being communicated, by expressing them differently. One way would be to express them as, as ranges. So instead of having a point spec, you would have a range of values uh, that hitting any of the uh, uh, well, points within that range um, would provide value um, uh, as perceived by the marketplace and would communicate to the engineer that uh, th they may have reached uh, sufficiency in their design effort. You can take these ranges and you can enhance them further, make them uh, communicate better information by placing alongside of them a graph showing how the market value will change over the range so that if an engineer sees that I've achieved a certain target, but boy, with a little bit more effort, I can achieve a lot more value. It communicates uh, meaningful information to them in their design. Um, the third way of communicating the shoulds into engineering would be as goals. As English-based um, ideas of what you're trying to accomplish in this particular design. The uh, communication of goals takes this, if you will, point focus, this target that's defined by specifications, and it opens up broadly, uh, bounded only by conceptual boundaries. Again, the, the, the boundaries being defined by the goals. Uh, the communication of shoulds as goals allows the focus to shift to not the achievement of this, these various points, but on generation of new knowledge and looking for at alternative ways of uh, uh, satisfying the uh, technical problem you're trying to solve. It allows us to rethink uh, the, the very nature of how we manage uh, engineering and product development. And it frees us from the pain and misery of testing for spec, a pass-fail test, to testing for knowledge, testing for learning. And this knowledge that we gain from testing the full range of, of, uh, of, of uh, technology uh, allows us to uh, capture knowledge and apply knowledge as innovation in the products under design. Mm -hmm.